Imagine. Invent. Inspire. Be a Sparkster. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can use the Sparkster Decentralized Cloud and the Sparkster No-Code Platform to create a systematic trading application that generates buy and sell signals and plots them for you on a graph. Of the many problems that traders face, they're often confronted by their own emotions when it comes to making decisions about entering a position or exiting a position. Often when they finally make the decision about entering a trade, it's too late. The price action has terminated. Or what if you could detect that price action while it's occurring and have those decisions about entering or exiting be independent of emotion, but in fact made on rational, technical basis. In this tutorial, we're going to show you how you can use the Sparks to Decentralized Cloud and the Sparks to No-Code platform to help make some of those decisions in a rational, systematic manner. Let's take a look. What this demo is going to show you is that we're going to look for price action where the price moves above a moving average. Moving above the moving average is a detection of that price action and therefore a buy signal. And moving below the moving average is an indication that prices may continue to fall or are likely to fall further and therefore present a sell signal. This allows us to maximize profits by taking profits while an equity is moving upwards rather than having to hold it when it's moving downwards. Let's take a look at how we might build this in the Sparks to No-Code platform in the Sparks to Decentralized Cloud. Let's get started. So we're gonna do this in seven simple steps. We'll start first by creating an account. Then we'll create a document that will allow us to save data, for example, the prices, the simple moving average and so forth. Next, we'll create a function that allows us to input the data into the document. In the future, you won't have to do this step, but at this time you do. Step number four, we'll then deploy the function that actually generates the signals. While today you have to create these functions in simplified JavaScript, in the future, you're going to be able to create these functions in plain English. And here's an example of what that will look like. Step number five, we'll load some initial data into the document. Step number six, we'll then begin to use the generate signal function. And then finally, we'll build the graphs that will represent the data. And that's it. Step number one, navigate to explore.sparks.network, then click on account creator, then click on create account. This will generate a public private key pair for your account. Save this in a text document. Next, we're going to create the document where the data is going to be stored. We're going to call this document Signal Generator. Click on Document Creator and at the top, fill in your public and private key. Next, name the document Signal Generator and then we're going to add fields to this document, the fields of data that we want to store. The first is the signal and it has a data type of text. And then the second one is prices and it has a data type of array. An array is a type of a list. Click on create document and the system will generate a document template ID. Save this template ID to your text document. Now for step number three. We're going to deploy a function that allows us to save data to the document. In the future, you won't have to do this step, but at this point in time, you do. So in the Explorer, click on Code Deployer and copy and paste the function into the top block. Then populate the public and private key pair and click on deploy. This is actually deploying your function to the Sparks to Decentralized Cloud.
and the results will return to you a hash that represents the function and some URLs that you may use to interact with the function. Copy and paste these into your text document. We're going to use these again. In step number four, we're going to do something very similar to what we did in step number three, which is deploy some more functions. But before we go through that, let's take a look at what these functions do. So the get SMA function at the bottom is taking values that it's received and calculating the average, otherwise known as the simple moving average. The part to focus on in the generate signals function is how we generate those signals. So you'll see that the logic is quite simple. If the current price is greater than the average or the SMA, we're going to generate a buy signal. Otherwise, we're going to generate a sell signal. And similarly, you can create signals that do something very similar for your own application. While today you have to create these functions in simplified JavaScript, in the future you're going to be able to create these functions in plain English. And here's an example of what that will look like. So next, copy and paste those functions into the code deployer and click deploy. You'll get a different function hash that represents this function. Copy that and paste it into your document. While we're here, let's prepare the URLs that the graphs are going to use to represent the data. Copy and paste the function hash from the generate signals function and paste it into this into the URL. You'll notice that we've added y equals price and y equals SMA to the first function. This is simply telling the graph to plot price and SMA on the y axis. Similarly, the second URL has y equals signal because we wanted to plot the signal. In step five, we're now going to interact with the functions that we've created. The first function that we're going to interact with is the save prices function. Recall that the save prices function saves prices to the document. To be able to do this, the system needs to know which document you're referring to. And recall that when we deployed the document, we were given a document template ID. We're going to need to insert the hash of the document template in this parameter. We're then going to need to provide it the set of prices that we want to store in the document. So in this case, we're going to store prices of 136.83, 137.65, 139.6, and 145.75. Now go back to the Explorer and copy and paste the hash of the function. Next, you'll want to copy and paste the input string so that you know which inputs or parameters you're providing to the function. And finally, you'll want to provide the private and public key. Then click on execute. Notice the output. You don't just get a transaction hash, but you also get a document ID. You can think of this document ID as like a record ID for the data you've just stored. Copy and paste your outputs into your text document. Step six really brings everything together. In this step, we're going to call generate signals function. And in doing so, we're going to pass the current market price. When we pass the current market price, it will calculate the new SMA based on the current market price. And then it will generate a signal, whether we should buy or sell. 
So let's get started with that. In order to call the generate signals function, we need to prepare the input string or the input parameters. So the first thing we need to know is which document template is this function going to interact with. So we'll grab the hash of the document template that we generated earlier on. We then need to know which record we're inserting the price into. Remember it's an array, so we're just adding to the list. So we would grab the document ID that was generated by the save prices function. And then we would provide a current price, let's say $130, and a period that we want to calculate the SMA over, in this case, four. Then go back to the Explorer and click on Code Executor. In the top field, paste the function hash that represents the generate signals function. Next, paste in your input string, and then, as usual, your public and private key. Then click on Execute. Notice the transaction output. It tells you the signal is sell, and we have an SMA of 138.115, and the price that we entered of 130. These outputs are gonna be really important because they're the outputs that we want to graph in the next step. So let's move on now to step number seven. Now finally, we're going to build the graphs so we can visualize all of this. Go into the Sparks to No-Code platform and click on Web Factory. Then click on Function. And in the widgets, drop a container with two columns. We'll have one column for a line graph and the second column for a gauge. To do that, click on the container and then scroll over in widgets to data visual and click on line graph. In the next column, click on gauge. Now let's configure these graphs to show the data that's being produced or outputted by the Sparks to Decentralized Cloud. So click on the, the three lines in the top left corner of the line graph, click on the properties cog and click on the properties of the line graph. Then, from the dropdown, select external. This is where those URLs that we created before are gonna come in handy. We're gonna collect the data from the Sparks to Decentralized Cloud via a stream. So copy the first URL and paste it into the provide URL box then click Get. Now we're going to want to poll the decentralized cloud every two seconds. And we want to set the x-axis of the line graph to the date and time. And we want to set the y-axis to the two y outputs that we selected, which is prices and SMA. And that's it. We'll do something very similar with the gauge. Click on the cog, click on the gauge properties, click on external in the dropdown, and copy and paste the second URL. Here, we're taking the signal and plotting that onto the gauge. Again, we want to poll this every two seconds, and we want to plot the signal. That's it, let's see how all this comes together. Name your function and save it. All right, let's see this in action. On the left-hand side, we have the function executor from the decentralized cloud. And on the right-hand side, we have the graphs that we just created in the no-code platform. The gray line on the graph represents the SMA and the blue curve represents the price. We're going to enter some new values. You can imagine that we might be sitting in front of our computer and entering values every half an hour or every hour as the data is being generated by the market. To record a new data point, update the price 
in the input parameters and click on execute. And you'll see momentarily that that's reflected in the graph on the right hand side. Let's continue adding some values. Notice we've not yet triggered a buy signal, and that's because we've not crossed the SMA, the gray line. Now we enter a data point that's above the SMA, and notice the gauge is flipped to the right hand side and it's colored in green. This is your buy signal. As we continue to enter prices that move upwards from the SMA, we, conti we continue to be in profitable territory. Notice the SMA is tracking upwards. Now we'll enter a data point which is below the SMA. And what we should see is that the gauge flips back over and produces a sell signal. We'll enter, a, we'll enter a value of 142. And exactly as we expected, the gauge has flipped over, but most importantly has generated a profit. We entered this trade at $139 and exited at 142, generating a profit of $3. While this example is very simplistic, the system is nonetheless very powerful. It allows you to define any type of indicator and any set of logic to define when signals are generated. And most importantly, to be able to take those outputs and graph them in seconds without any code. We hope you see the value and power of the Sparks to Decentralized Cloud and the Sparks to No Code platform.